all right? Just FYI, there are about four and a half newtons in a pound. So if you weighed 100 pounds, you'd, on the, you'd weigh on a scale measured in, that's calibrated in newtons, you'd weigh about 450 newtons. No, you didn't just gain weight. Same weight, different unit. Okay, newton. Well, I'm going to give you a, a couple of different definitions well, three different definitions of a force. It's the third one I want you to remember. For starters, you can think of a force as a push or a pull. A force is a push or a pull, all right? You push on something, you pull on something. You're applying a force. If you look at uh, the physics classroom and in some textbooks, they will label a force as either a contact force, such as me touching the whiteboard marker or me contacting the whiteboard itself contact force pushing on the whiteboard, whiteboard pushes on me, contact force, or what they call a field force, F-I-E-L-D, contact force and field force. A field force would be one like gravity where it acts through, it, the force acts through space. There's a space separating the two objects in question. Field forces, gravity is the classic example. I'm not a big fan of those definitions, but contact force and field force, you will see that. It's the third definition I want you to remember. Force is an interaction. Force is an interaction. It's an interaction, depending on what type of force, it could be an interaction between two objects that have mass. That's Isaac Newton's definition of gravity. Uh, it could be the interaction between two charges, such as positive charge and a negative charge, proton and electron. You know, they attract each other. Or a proton and another proton repel each other. So force is an interaction. It's an, it's a, an attractive interaction or a repulsive interaction. Of course, there's no repulsive gravity that we know of. But force is an, is an interaction. If you have a stick of dynamite, does a stick of dyna dynamite contain force? Does a stick of dynamite contain force? Yes or no? The answer is no. You cannot contain an interaction. An interaction is something that happens. Force happens. What a stick of dynamite does contain is energy, which we'll talk about in the following unit when we get into potential and kinetic energy. It doesn't contain force. You cannot contain force. You, it contains, a stick of dynamite contains energy that then can provide forces. Right? It's a little bit like in Star Wars. May the force be with you. Tap it. You can't tap into the force. You can tap into some energy, but you can't tap into the force. It'd be better to say, may the energy be with you, Luke, but it doesn't have the same ring, ring to it. Okay, so force is an interaction. Next question is, what are those forces? We have identified four fundamental forces. Forces. There are four fundamental forces. What is that? That means that there are four distinctly different ways to provide pushes and pulls. Four distinctly different ways to provide pushes and pulls. Up until 100 years ago, we thought there were only two, uh, of which you are, are, are familiar with. I'm going to write these up here. You need to know them, and just a basic idea of, for test purposes, a basic idea of uh, um, what they are. I'm going to write them from the weakest to the strongest force. The weakest force you're all familiar with. You've known about this, whether you knew its name or not, you've known about it pretty much since you were born, and that is gravitational force. Gravitational force, which I'm going to use an F subscript G for force of gravity. Make a brief note to yourself that gravitational force is a force of attraction between any two objects that have mass. I'll say that one more time. Gravitational force is a force of attraction between any two objects that have mass. That means that you 
and my whiteboard marker are gravitationally attracted. You have mass, the whiteboard marker has mass. The whiteboard marker is gravitationally attracted to the ceiling tile up above. All right, But it can only go one direction when I let it go, and it's going to accelerate in the direction of the largest mass that's in close proximity, because that's where the greatest gravitational tug is going to come from, and that, of course, is the Earth right below my feet. Um, that's why when I let go of it, it doesn't go you know, accelerating towards you. Uh, you are gravitationally attracted to every single fro fresh, brophy freshman over there. I mean, and they're gravitationally attracted to you. Uh huh, disturbing. Gravitational force. It's extremely weak, but it acts over vast distances. The next one I'm going to mention, but we won't deal with it in this class. It's called the weak nuclear force. And all you need to know about that is, A, its name, and that it's a force associated with um, radioactive decay. The weak nuclear force is a force associated with we, um, radioactive decay. The next force is one that you are very familiar with. The electromagnetic force. And this is going to have a bunch of different symbols depending on, on what it looks like when we interact with it. I'll talk about that next um, after we finish with the fundamental forces. But electromagnetic force, as the name implies, has to do with electricity, protons, electrons, positives and negatives, and magnetism, north pole, south pole. Okay, They're really part of the same picture these two. That's why they're all in the same name. But the electromagnetic force, that's the force responsible for everything that you see, or the fact that you can hear me, the fact that the building has not yet fallen down and your seat hasn't collapsed, and the fact that I can breathe and talk, and, uh, and the fact that this has color, all right, um, that's all electromagnetism. Electromagnetic force, getting much stronger, but it acts over much shorter distances. It's, of course, it's also the force behind light. It's the force behind lightning, uh, but it does typically, it acts over much shorter distances than gravitational force. Gravitational force is really responsible for the structure of the whole cosmos as a, as a whole um, and the solar Shimoni system. Pinto, please report to the front office. Shimoni Pinto, thank you. Please take care of that. Okay, and electromagnetic force uh, is the stuff that we interact with with more on, a, uh, on the scale that you're familiar with. You know, the fact you can breathe and eat and talk and all that stuff. And then the last one, you all know that protons are attracted to electrons and vice versa, but do protons like to be next to other protons? And the answer is a resounding no, all right? So why are protons next to other protons in the nucleus of an atom? What are they doing there if they repel each other electrically? You know positive charges repel other positive charges. So what are they doing together in the nucleus of an atom? That's a tiny space. They're stuck next to each other. It's not like they have some little shell around them. We're already just talking about protons. So why are they so close together? Good question. There is one more force that's extremely strong. And if it weren't for this force, there would only be one element in the, in the entire universe. One element, that element would be hydrogen, because every other, every other element has more than one proton in the nucleus. So how, what are they doing together? There has to be some other force that binds the protons together, and that is called the strong nuclear force. The strong, strong, strong nuclear force. And as the name implies, it binds the nucleus together. It binds the nucleus together. If it weren't for that, we wouldn't have any nuclei other than protium, which is hydrogen with just one proton and nothing else. Okay. So we are going to focus our attention on gravitational force and electromagnetic force. But you should know the four fundamental forces going from weakest to strongest. Okay?